It's time to mount up, Rangers. We got ourselves a tutorial here on how to begin a United Provinces campaign. And in this tutorial, we're going to be basically setting it up for beginners to learn the basics to doing your United Provinces campaign. I think I already said that. But anyways, let's get to it. If you happen to be a returning subscriber, you know this is David with Faramir's Rangers. And if you happen to be a new subscriber, don't forget to click that subscribe button. It is free after all, and it does help notify of future content. So don't forget to click that subscribe button. Also, let's break this thing down. United Provinces campaigns can be a pain. Part, pardon the pun. So anyways, I'm going to break this down in the description below. You'll see timestamps in the description. I'm breaking this into chapters and the chapters will be uh, basically uh, what you got for armies, what you got for navies, your economy, your government, your allies, your first moves, all that good stuff. Let's do it. All right. So what you got with United Provinces? Let's discuss. Here at your capital of uh, Amsterdam, you're going to have two armies. Your first one consists of at least one line of infantry. You got a militia, a pikeman, of course, your art. It's all right here. You can see it. And in the capital itself, you're going to have another militia, another pikeman, uh, artillery, and a general. In the Americas, you're going to have in Carago. Hold on. First of all, we'll talk about Dutch Guyana. You have one militia in Dutch. I'm sorry, in Carago over here, you're going to have another militia. Now, switching over to India, you're going to have a colonial infantry, the VOC, and you're going to have a general's bodyguard. So that's your armed forces on the land. Right, so now we're going to discuss your naval uh, power from left to right. I'm sorry, from right to left on the map. We'll go backwards. Um, over in the Indies, you're going to have a fleet here. Now, this fleet will come under pressure from the pirates here. At one of these trade nodes is the pirates. You're going to come under pressure from them. In in uh, in the Indian region, you're going to have a fleet of a six rate, a brig, and a sloop. And then in the Americas, you're going to have a fleet over here by Carago. It's going to be a fifth, a sixth, and a sloop. And you can see here you're under pressure from the uh, pirate navy here, which has two brigs and a sloop. You're going to have that to deal with. In Europe, you're going to have a flute, a fifth rate, a brig, and a sloop. And that's guarding your home port. As far as regions are concerned, you're going to start off with Netherlands with your capital of Amsterdam. You're also going to have two regions in the Americas. You're going to have Dutch Guyana and you are going to have Carago. And those are going to be your two American regions. And in India, you will have Ceylon. Alright, so let's talk about your government. As United Provinces, you're going to start off as a republic. Now that gives you a couple benefits. Number one benefit is your research. You will be able to research faster as a republic. I do recommend starting off with empiricism as it does give you bonus uh, technology research. And it will also give you the ability to build colleges and you're going to obviously need that very important thing to get going but once you have that research I do recommend finishing off the whole first branch of philosophy and then you can start on military or wherever you want to go from there um, as far as your ministers are concerned as a republic if you kick somebody you can only kick one member of the cabinet cabinet so you need to choose wisely who you do kick now you have three cabinet members who are not great, your treasurer and your navy uh, uh, 
cabinet members are extremely good. So that's something to keep in mind. Your Indian and your American ministers are also very good. Uh, but it does probably take several turns to get these three sorted out. And there's not really much shifting and jiving you can do to make them that much better. Because you do want this guy here in Navy because you have a large naval presence. You don't really have so much a large army presence. Alright, so let's talk about your economics. Economics 101 for United Provinces. Okay, so your uh, budgeted next turn is going to be 3874 at this given moment. Now, that will change as you add more trade partners and, and get a couple things sorted out. Uh, this is going to go up. Now, one thing to remember about trade is because you have a region in India and in the Americas where there's spice, you're going to have two of the better um, access to the better um, trade items on the world market. Uh, tea is about average and spices are one of the best right behind ivory. So that's something to keep in mind. Now a couple other things you need to keep in mind with the economy of the United Provinces it is vital for you to maintain a great trade route. If you are raided by enemies, it will put your whole economy in jeopardy. And you can see you have a long trade route to establish from your trade coming from India, which is quite a lot from the, the Indies um, over here. The trade nodes in the Indies, you're getting 1600 coming in from that 1680. And then you're getting an additional 242 and that will jump up as you build Ceylon up so you got almost 2,000 coming in from the Indian regions now in the Americas you're sending about 500 from that trade note uh, trade route and another 300 from this one which is not bad now a couple other things to keep in mind with United Provinces economy is you're going to be again raided by the pirates here so you need to deal with them quickly and swiftly. So in the Indies, you stand a somewhat good chance of beating the pirate navy there. You will take some damage and it is not going to be easy. They have Zebex and they are quite the challenge. They have extremely strong front cannons. So they one shot can actually explode your ships, but um, I, I usually send the trade ships to try to board them and then use my uh, flutes to and brig to uh, come alongside after they've gotten in into them, if you will, if you're lucky. It is not easy, I will tell you. In the Americas, you're going to have a fleet here, a pirate fleet you're going to need to deal with extraordinarily rapidly. And that way they do not raid your trade lines here or damage your ports, which is something that the pirates are prone to doing. As far as the economy is concerned and where you spend your money, um, the, with the 7500 that you get, I normally immediately build up my capital region first. This is the most important region to you as you are all your income has to flow to the, the main capital of your empire so it's important for you to make sure that this is a very strong and thriving capital so we're going to be working to build that up immediately it brings you down to two hundred dollars right so let's discuss your allies you're going to have a few uh, starting off as United Provinces and those few are going to be Great Britain and Austria now uh, due to being an ally with Austria, they're going to drag you into war with several nations right off first turn. Most likely being Poland, Lithuania, and Prussia uh, will be the two nations you'll immediately be at war with. Now, Prussia is not, at this moment, might actually benefit you because they will start sending some uh, fleets over and you can take those fleets and make some money off of them. Uh, Poland Lithuania is not going to be any threat to you. They have no ability to create a navy. As 
far as Great Britain is concerned, they can be a major ally for you if you maintain your friendship with them as they will help keep your borders on your uh, naval routes uh, a little bit more secure. Another thing to keep in mind is you will be, you are bordering the Spanish as they have Flanders right here next to you on the border. So since they are bordered to your capital, you're going to have to swiftly deal with them. And this is not something that you're going to want to piddle around with as again, the Spanish, um, as if you leave them here alone, they will get stronger and stronger and you have to protect your capital at all costs. Your ally in Great Britain will most likely come into war with you, but they'll be at war with Spain no matter what. So usually I don't even call them into my wars. I let them join on their own accord and they will eventually be at war with both Britain, I'm sorry, both French and Spanish uh, enemies. All right, so finishing up on your allies, you're going to have one thing that you're going to need to make sure you take care of first turn. That is having some type of relations with Westphalia. If you do not, they will declare war on you at some point as you start to expand. So you need to maintain a friendship with them. And usually I try to get an alliance and a trade agreement with them first turn, which they will most likely accept. Now, it's important, again, do not call them into your wars or you will end up being at, uh, breaking that alliance with them and sometimes going to war with them too early, something you want to avoid for a little while. You can see here that they are allied with um, the Wittenberg, Hanover, and Austria, so you should have good relations with them at first. All right, first moves. Let's discuss what you can do first in the American region. We're gonna do this from left to right. All right, so in the Americas, again, you have this fleet here, you got the pirates you're gonna to have to deal with. I usually either take my sixth rate or my fifth rate and deal with this fleet here. This will give you some extra money in your pocket. And then you can go over here with one of the other ships, usually I leave the sloop behind. You take the sloop to the port, um, take your militia out of the capital, recruit two generals after you've gained the money from this little episode here. And then you take this over, land them at Trinidad and Tobago, and then take Trinidad and Tobago by forcing them to surrender. Normally they will give you it up and then that's one pirate region gone and then what you can do is let's go over to Europe and we'll discuss Europe okay so first turn um, something you're gonna want to do is probably declare war on France first turn that's gonna draw Spain into the war and all their allies but the one thing is by declaring war on France and not Spain you will at least avoid war for a short time with the Spanish holdings in the Americas which is going to be New Spain um, and you're also going to have uh, well, I guess it's just New Spain but anyways it leaves you out of war with them for the time being um, as you will go to war with Louisiana, uh, but they are less of a threat. All right, so in Europe, after you've declared war on the French, I usually take my fleet here. I'll take my fifth rate, and I will do combat with this fleet. And I will capture the fifth rate and make money off the two six rates and the brig. It should usually get you about $2,000, okay? Now, what I'll also do in Europe is I will take my armies and combine them up into Amsterdam. And I hope uh, that the Spanish army comes and sieges me. Sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. Okay, so let's go over here and take a look at France. Now you'll see France has several armies that they start off with. They have 
uh, militia and an infantry, two more infantry and a corps of boys, a lancer, another artillery, uh, another line. So they got four lines they start off with. But again, with you in your capital, you should be able to hold off uh, for at least a turn against the Spanish and the French. And then what you can do with that extra money you've gained from the fleet from the Americas is recruit up two more line infantry here for the next turn. And there's a good reason for that. The next turn, what you'll, whoops, let's go back. The next turn, what you'll do is you'll take your army that just took Trinidad and Tobago and you're going to take another fleet that has them. Um, you're going to take these guys up here, land them at Leeward Islands, siege, bring your two line infantry, drop them off, and siege the pirate capital. So with two line and a militia and two generals, should give you enough to beat this pirate army. Now it's not going to be an easy feat, but it is still a winnable battle. If you're unsure, you can always go another turn of recruiting infantry, so that'll put you at turn three, at least, of knocking the pirates out of the game. In India, you're just going to want to hold on. You'll either make sure that you have this port secured in some way, but you'll just kind of go status quo for the first few turns. Switching back over to the Americas, you're also going to have a issue because you're at war of France now the French guy uh, French over here at French Guyana are going to press on to Dutch Guyana and you only have a militia here so what does that mean for you that means this is why I'm saying on turn two you should have the leeward islands knocked out so on turn three uh, I'm sorry on turn two you should have the pirates knocked out and on turn three you should be able to make a move to take French Guyana and take that over and then you can come over here and deal with any rebellions the following turn well I don't know about you guys but I think that's a pretty good starting point uh, also try these tricks of assassinating the generals uh, you might get lucky and get at least one of them out of it uh, I got the French general at least in that attempt and uh, didn't get the Spanish general in the second attempt but it is worth a try anyways don't forget you can always save before you make the attempt it does sometimes help the odds if you know what I mean that's a pro tip for you anyways um, getting back to this uh, I appreciate you guys for those of you that did join me all the way through this tutorial also again don't forget that if you did enjoy this content don't forget to leave a like on this video it does help this video to grow the more love it gets so make sure to shower on that love and also if you want to be notified of future content don't forget to click on that subscribe button and click the bell it does help notify you of future content and again it is free after all what more is beautiful in life than free things subscribe now today before the offer ends anyways we'll see you on the next video thank you again guys i appreciate your continued support